welcome back and we embrace you open arms back to the Christ Jesus College and Seminary and the Christ Jesus Chapel and allow me to express our personal thanks for subscribing sharing the link but above all your prayers and your encouragement we've had a wonderful time together in the book of Romans the epistles to the Romans what an incredible church that must have been in Italy Gentile believers believing in the lion from the tribe of Judah and what a wonderful time we also had in the book of Hebrews phenomenal study and I hope that you that we continue as we forge through our goal is to cover as much as, as much as possible the New Testament this summer together both privately and together or collectively here on YouTube and that will all be encouraged we need encouragement as much as possible and so we pray that God will bless us uplift us and give us the insight that we need we're now in the book of James and James is one of those chapters where don't be misled because it's only a couple of chapters it is lean it's sinewy it's tight it's truly just abounding in the Holy Spirit so we're gonna look at chapter one we're gonna look at some select verses from chapter one and we're gonna allow the Holy Spirit just to lead me spontaneously to give us food for thought you know many times as Christians we read things too quickly and oftentimes we think that head knowledge is important but we're going to learn from these words that you can know the bible inside and out my friends the devil knows the bible better than we do the demons have the word of god memorized knowledge of the word of god is not what's going to save you there's going to be a lot of people who are going to miss out on an eternity in the new Jerusalem because they're going to miss eternity they're going to miss heaven they're going to miss the presence of Christ by 17 inches it was all up here but it wasn't here that's exactly what God wants he wants our heart so we're in the book of James and we're going to start from verse 1 and then we're going to jump from there to verse 19. now it's an amazing first verse it's written by James he's the the stepbrother the half brother to to Jesus Jesus Christ our Lord his father was Joseph and his mother was Mary so they shared the same ancestry from Mary now look how James introduces himself he had every right to say that he was a kin he was related to Jesus that, he, that Jesus and him grew up together and he could have gone into great detail about his personal experiences which may have been more than the than, than what was shared in the three and a half years with the disciples none of that is mentioned look what he says here James a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ and this is amazing because Jesus Christ especially in the Gospel of John he creates a lot of emphasis before he dies this is at the, at the Last Supper on the importance of of what the kingdom rules you know, they see there are kingdom there are kingdom rules down here there are laws of the jungle that are down here on earth okay but the real kingdom laws that if you want to be great in the kingdom of God you need to be humble and meek as a child you need to have a faith of a baby you need to be a servant you want to be great in the kingdom of God you need to learn to be a servant that's where you grow in the Lord, and that's how your ministry expands. The Bible says, be careful. You want to be a Bible teacher? You want to be a pastor? All the more condemnation coming your way, because every time you point a finger, you've got three fingers pointing back at you. And what does Jesus say? Jesus says very specifically that the least in the kingdom of God will be the people who preach the word of God, but didn't practice it. But those that are going to be great in the kingdom of God are those who preached and teach the word of God and they exemplified it through their servanthood. So James here is describing himself no more, no less, and so should we, as being a servant of God. 
and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now look who his audience is. You understand that persecution started from Jerusalem, then to Samaria, and to the, and to the rest of the world. And so he's saying here that this epistle that he's writing, this, this letter that he's writing is to the 12 tribes. Now notice he doesn't say the 12 tribes of Israel. He says 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. We read Galatians very carefully. We read Romans very, very carefully. Not everyone who is a descendant of Israel is a descendant of Abraham. It's those who believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and have taken Romans 10, 9 and made it, them, made it for themselves. They have confessed that Jesus Christ is Lord. They believe in their heart that, that God has raised them from the dead and they too have been risen in spirit with the Lord. These, these are the, the ones that are scattered. These are early Jewish Christian believers that were the first generation that endured so much persecution. It was so much easier for them to blend in with the Gentiles because they were being so heavily persecuted by the Roman Empire and by the Sanhedrin. His word to them is greeting. And Paul always always invokes that we should always greet each other with a holy kiss. Now we jump to verse 19. Here he's giving very practical advice and spending some time with some great men, especially one of our Bible scholars who is now going to be a full-time missionary in Asia, and totally faith-based. He hasn't asked for any money from anyone. He has total faith that God's going to prepare every single step of the way. He knows that he needs to go beyond the mountain, he said, but that road, he can't see what's behind it, but he knows that the Lord is waiting for him there. And so these words, you know, when you talk to people, men like of this great caliber of faith, these words become more real. He says, we're for my beloved brethren. Now, as brethren, we need to always we all we need to treat each other as beloved. We not just say it, but really act it. Where for my beloved brother, and let every man, let every woman, let every person be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Oh, how many divorces would we could have been avoided? How many business clashes could have been avoided? How many uh, a, a lot could be avoided and i'm sure that your mind will take you into your own present and past and you look back we had simply taken this advice from the holy spirit slow to speak slow to wrath and quick to listen a lot of times when people talk we should give them benefit of the doubt and say could you please repeat that again i didn't quite get that could i can you Say that in a different way. And a lot of times when you give that person the benefit of the doubt, they'll catch themselves and they'll, they'll re reconfigure what they said. We need to be good listeners, active listeners. Unfortunately, in both of my callings in life, being a, a surgeon and a physician and, and also as a pastor, there is very poor listening skills that are being found in at our present time we need more active listeners more proactive listeners people that are that give you eye contact and you're nodding your head and you're you're validating it's very important to, in today's society that has that people are forgetting how to how to handwrite people don't have their their friends and their family's phone numbers memorized they're totally linked in so to speak with their smart devices and and the technology to, to, to come. And yet still, these verses are very important. Swift to hear, slow to wrath, slow to speak. And then the next verse wraps it all up. For the wrath of man, when you get angry, when you're filled with rage, when you become impatient, when you are just you had your fill, and you get so frustrated. May the Holy Spirit always bring this verse to our mind that the wrath of man does not work 
the righteousness of God. Just so we, we reviewed the actual definition of what the kingdom of God is and the first word, and that was righteousness. And, that, and all of our righteousness comes from Christ. Our own timetable, our own expectations, our own feelings toward a person or a thing or an event doesn't mean that it's in sync with God's will. The wrath of man, our wrath, our anger, our displaced venting doesn't create any solutions. In fact, it creates more problems. And, and, and it definitely does not fulfill the will of God. We need to learn that scripture verse that says, commit your work unto the Lord and he shall get it accomplished. You see, you do your best, then you leave it in God's hands and, and he'll do the rest. Do your best, he'll take care of the rest. And then they, and just let go of the anxiety, let go of the doubt, let go of the fear. Don't start, stop the calculating. If you really believe that Christ is with you and never absent, everything's okay. Now we go into deeper advice in verse 21. Wherefore lay apart, now the King James is very beautiful. It says here, all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. How is it translated in the vernacular? Stop all the baloney. Stop all any evil, anything that is outside of the righteousness of God. I mean, that means coarse joking. That means anything that does not give glory to God, anything that does not edify the listeners, anything that can be even an appearance of evil, get it out of your life. And I tell you, if, if Christians really did that, people would be coming to us and saying, why is your life so different? You're filled with joy. You're always smiling. You seem to be always going from victory to victory. Things are happening to you sometimes in not so good of a light, but you seem to have a, have a bounce in your step. You seem to have a twinkle in your eye. It's because we've gone out the trash in our life. And all of us have to do that on an individual basis, on a, on a daily, in our own daily devotions. People have their, their own formulas of what their devotion should be, but the reality is that the great preacher, teacher, and, and author, Towser, once told a fellow preacher, Leonard Ravenhill, that the best investment he ever made was going to a store and buying a rug for $25. He says, come on over here, I'll show it to you here, it's my office. And he showed him, he showed him the carpet and all, and he says, I don't see what's so special about the office. He goes, when I come to my office at 9 o'clock in the morning, I lie down on my stomach, and I fall down prostrate before the Lord, and I pray, and I worship for as long as he requires me, and I let him speak to me, and then I start my business. You see, that's how we should have our devotions, where we're completely living sacrifices, totally open to the Holy Spirit to talk to us and lead us in Scripture where he wants us to be in the pasture, not where we want to go. We want to be in the Word where he wants us in the Word, and, and we don't need any commentary or anything from the Internet. The Bible is its own definer. The, the Bible is its own definition. We will learn everything we need and if all the translations and, and all the revelations we need are found all in the Bible itself. Now, we just, we just discussed the scripture. And that's going to be the next verse, 22. It goes, be doers of the word, not hearers only. Now, people misquote this a lot and then say, be ye doers of, be ye doers of the word and not hearers of the word. But that doesn't, doesn't say this. It says here, be ye doers of the word and now you're going to see you're going to see a very important inflection here that many people don't notice there's no sleight of hands here so just watch the verses very carefully be ye doers of the word verse 22 not hearers only and the reason being is you'll be deceiving yourself if you just read the word of god you say oh that's very intellectual that's very beautiful i learned a lot that was very historical i understand the geography i understand implications now i say how this ties in with, with with one of the gospels that's all beautiful but if it didn't change you 
if it doesn't change how you act, it doesn't. If it doesn't change how you, how you interact with other people, if it didn't, it didn't change your prayer life, it didn't make you more submissive to Christ. It didn't prune you and, and produce more fruit of the Holy Spirit. Then it was a, a waste of time. Because God expects us that when we read something in the Scriptures, we automatically realize that we need to be doing it. Now, verses 23 and 24 are very easy. He says, the person who is just the hearer of the word is like someone who's looking at a mirror. You know, when you look at the mirror, you see yourself. And you see, that's what happens. When you look at the word of God, you, you can see your face. You can see, you know what? <laughs> I'm not as perfect as I thought I was. You're looking in the mirror and you realize, you know, I, there's some character flaws. There's some personality flaws. There's some idiosyncrasies. Uh, I'm saying one thing, but I'm doing another thing. And it says very clearly in verse 24 that if you look into the Word of God and God is showing you the difference and you walk away, it says in verse 24, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way. See, the person is going his way, not God's way. He straight away forgets what manner of man he was. So there's a lot of people in the world today who are nominal Christians. They think they're spirit-filled Christians. They're actually old covenant Christians. They're not new covenant Christians. They don't stand new covenant eschatology. It's because they're reading the word and it's all up here, but it isn't here. Now, look how James now shows us a more brighter path. It's a narrow path, but it's a brighter path. But whoever looks into the law, the perfect law of liberty, that's definitely Holy Spirit language right there. Perfect law of liberty. How can you have a law and liberty? It's almost like an oxymoron, but it's the perfect law of liberty because it's all based on love. I do what I do for Christ out of love. What I do for you is it because I want to or have to. It's because I love you. You see, love should be the total foundation of everything we do. Then and it's a totally just all wrapped in faith. Now, see here the play on words here. But whoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the, are you with me? Verse 25, doer of the work. Did you notice that? I'm not sure if you've, if you've ever seen that before. You see, in verse 22 it says, be ye doers of the word. But in verse 25 it says, doer of the work. Oh, the problem with the church today is there's too many chiefs. Everyone wants, to, everyone wants to be a leader. Everyone wants to be a Paul. But no one wants to wash feet and no one wants to serve tables. Everyone wants that fancy position. There's only a few pastors that I know that are that are pastoring for free because that's their calling. Doer of the work. Are we the doer of the work? No, well, I, I can't answer for you. I'm going to have to answer for myself because we're all going to be accountable. We read that yesterday in Romans. We're all going to be accountable. I'm going to have to give an accounting of my time. I'm going to have to give an accounting of, of the gifts that were given to me. By the measure of grace. Now, twenty six to twenty seven is uh, a straight. It's going to be it's, it's, it's a straight right cross and an upper uh, an upper hook here. So, bear with me here. It's, and don't take anything personal. This is coming straight from the Word of God to all of us. Above all, myself. It says, verse twenty six: If any man, if any person, who seems to be religious, and that's becoming more and more relevant today. Everyone is acting more religious, but there's no spirit. If anyone among you seems to be religious, but he does not bridle his tongue, he cannot control his tongue. He deceives his own heart. And this man's religion is vain. I don't need to go any further on that. James goes on, as, on this in a later chapter, and I hope we will review it, that if you can't control your tongue, the tongue is the most deceitful and most evil part of our body. It can set a whole forest on fire. It is a world of evil, according to James. Controlling our tongue is so important. When you can, when you have submitted your tongue to the Holy Spirit, that's probably the last act in, in your complete holiness, because now you're really 
you're really completely submissive to the Spirit of God. Now, verse 27 gives us a, the, our closing verse here, which you're going to have to meditate on, and, you, and you're going to have to really come to grips with yourself. It, it's something that it's I've read again, and, and, and it's really affected me. So I'm going to read it very slowly. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. I'm going to read it one more time. I'm not going to embellish on it. I'm going to allow the Spirit of God to take those words and make his impression upon you. Pure religion, if you really have faith in Christ, it's undefiled. Your faith is undefiled before God. And the, and the, the double emphasis, God and our Father. We need and we ought to be visiting the fatherless. These are children who don't have fathers. And vi visiting the widows in their affliction. And also to keep ourselves unspotted from the world. That's a whole new, that, that could be a sermon all by itself. Well, I hope and pray that this was a blessing, an encouragement, and will give you a more impetus to reread the first chapter of James and maybe finish the whole book of James. And we look forward to seeing you again this Sunday. Pray for our message. This Sunday, we pray that the Holy Spirit will really use it to encourage all of us because Christ is coming back soon and we need to be totally aware that he has a very specific detailed plan just for you. And we all might be in different parts of the vineyard, but we need to be really serious. We need to be really conscious that we use our time right. And so that when he comes, he'll find us busy in service for him. May God richly bless you. I love you, but he loves us the most. Have a supernatural day with Jesus.